Okay, so in the last lesson we went through the navigation tools to sort of move around this uh, viewport, this grid, and some of the selection tools. And we're going to go into a bit more advanced versions of these tools and how to change the settings of these tools in a later tutorial. So we're going to skip over this bit for a minute and go over more of the viewport and then sort of revisit these tools again. Okay, so directly below these tools here, you can start to see these viewport presets. So if we click the first one, perspective, not not a lot's going to happen because we're already in perspective. And the way we can tell is if we look at the bottom of the viewport, it says the uh, perspective. Now the one below that looks like a far grid. And we cl click that and it's going to bring us into this um far view. And this is going to be quite um I don't know, quite recognizable from other packages because it's used in a lot of 3D packages. And the main reason for this, if you're quite new to, you know, any sort any sort of 3D, is you really want to look down the different axes because the viewport, sort of the perspective is good, but you can't get a definite sort of. Um, you can can't get really detailed views. So, sort of trying to pan this round to the top, you can't really see if it's aligned on a certain axes or aligned with the grid. And the beauty of a grid is if especially with me mechanical objects you want, want this as sort of a reference of where things are so if we click here and again I'm going to go through this menu later on but essentially all I've done is hid hidden the grid and you can see it's going to be quite confusing of sort of where you are in 3D space so the grid is going to be very useful and anything that you need especially when you've got reference as well you'll want these different views so these three views here that have been added are called orthographic views. So there's the top, the front, and the side. And these are essentially going to be views of the same thing, the same space. They're not three different, four different things. So if I just go to the polygon tab, I'm just going to click polygons, and again create another sphere. And I'm just going to click and drag to create that sphere. You can see that each one of these grids is the same grid. So where the black lines are, which is representing the axes, you can see that it's consistent in each viewport. So they're all looking at the same thing. It's just a way of, for definite, getting a side, front, and top view. Okay, so the next one below is um, the perspective and outliner. So again, this is a good way to sort of change different. Uh, windows depending on what you're working on. So this is a good thing about Maya is it's really customizable. You can switch between different windows. You don't have to stick with the far view or the perspective. Now the outliner, we'll just briefly go over this, is basically sort of a list of everything that's in the scene. So here you can see you've got P sphere one. Above that we've got perspective top, front and side, which are cameras that have been created, you know, which are created in every scene. And then you've got a few things like default light set, which are just that sort of objects that are created in every sort of scene in Maya. So this is going to be a list of all objects. So as you start creating objects in Maya, they're all going to get listed in the outliner. So it's sort of a list of everything that's in your scene. So it's easy to access. Um, so we can continue moving down here. The next one, and also you can hover over it and get that tooltip again, the perspective graph. Now we're going to go into these windows in a bit more detail later on so don't worry if, if these windows look a bit confusing you just need to know sort of where to access them so a perspective graph the graph editor as it's called is for animation curves so it's a way to edit your animation later on and again we're going to go into a bit more detail of that later on the next one below it's going to be perspective and node editor and in later ver earlier versions of Maya you won't have this a uh, node created below, it'll look something a bit like this and all I'm doing here is actually clicking and dragging so you can see in these, um, when you've got split view parts you've sort of got these little barriers between that have got like little dotted lines again in the middle as you hover over these you can see it gets highlighted and it comes up with an icon on your mouse so if you click and drag these you can sort of expand or collapse them so if you bring it right to the far left, it's going to collapse it completely. So just drag that back out again. And I'll just go back to the perspective. 
So as we said in every tutorial, that Maya has got several different ways to do the same thing. So again, clicking down here, going between different viewports is going to be quite time consuming, especially if you want to switch between things really quickly. So another way to do that is to press the space bar. And what you're going to see here is sort of a more advanced menu that's got quite a lot of things in there. And one thing you do, don't want to do is get too daunted over how many things are here. So the main thing I usually use is if you tap spacebar and with your icon over the Maya in the middle, you can right click and you get up this marking menu. And as we said earlier, marking menus depend on what you've got selected or what, what you're clicking over. So if you're clicking space over here without this selected, it's different things like select all. Then if you're on the sphere, right click brings up the marking menu with things on the sphere. If I hold spacebar and right click on the word Maya, it's going to be a marking menu for the different cameras. And you can see here, if I let go, it's going to switch to the front front view. Now, if we want to quickly move between these views, you can just tap spacebar. So here, the last one we had was perspective outliner. So I'm just going to click to the far view, and I'm going to press spacebar. And it depends where you press spacebar. So if I press spacebar over this perspective, so just tapping it, you can see that it's going to expand the perspective to take up the full screen. I'm going to tap to the top and then hover over the front so you can see how you can quickly press spacebar and quickly move between these views quite quickly. Now say like the perspective graph editor, I can do the same here, just tap between these. So it's just a way of having that split view so you can see two things whilst you're doing it. So for example the graph editor, we said it's for animation you can see the animation keys, you can see the object moving around if you want to start pausing your character you could tap in the perspective work on him in a bigger view and then quickly move back to the graph editor so it's just a quick way of sort of moving between different things so just to briefly go over again if we hold the space bar so this time if we hold it instead of tapping it you can see that we've got all these different menus and if we look carefully these menus again match up to the menus at the top so we've got file, edit, modify, create, display all these different things that are accessible at the top and then if we look again as we mentioned earlier on these are sort of dependent on what you're working on so at the moment we've got it set to rendering switch it to animation you've got different animation menus here if we press and hold spacebar when we've got the viewport selected, so I'm just clicking in the viewport to select it. If we press spacebar in here, we have all the animate, the mesh, the curves, dynamics, all in one menu. So there's several different ways to do the same thing. You can have a click the menu to the top left, go to animation, click on our animation menu here. I could go to the animation tab, click on these different tool icons here, or I can press and hold spacebar in the viewport and access the exact same tools so there's several different ways to access the same things and this just means whichever way you prefer I've met people that like to click on the menus I've met people that only use the shelf I've met people that only tap spacebar and never look at anything above so it's just, just whichever way you find quickest so if you can't see all these menus one thing you can do is tap um, hold spacebar go to hotbox control and right click and you can see show command menus show panel specific menus so you can click these to sort of bring up different things oops. so again like show all show oops I don't usually use the space bar as you can tell so hotbox control I could go to show all and it's going to show all these menus I can go to hide all and it's just going to show the very basics show all so it's brought that all back okay so yeah as you can mention I was having a bit of trouble there because I don't usually tend to use that I do find it quite useful to move in between these different windows and then quickly move in between like different views but I tend to use the menus above but again that's it's totally dependent on on the user so you might prefer this sort of marking menu as well 
Okay, so what we need to go through as well is we haven't really touched on the menus up here and the menus, what these sort of boxes are on the side. So to start off with, as we mentioned, pressing and holding spacebar, you can go between all these different things. It's going to be the same on the menus at the top and also these sort of tabs along here, which is called the shelf. And as you can see, polygons, if I just switch to polygons at the top left, we can see under mesh, edit mesh, proxy, all these different menus, there's quite a lot of different options down here, a lot of tools. And there's not that many on the shelf. And that's because the shelf generally has the most um, common, the most used tools. So things like spheres, cylinders, different things, these are going to be used quite a lot. So these are the, just the most common tools. To get every single tool on that's in these different menus on the shelf, it would mean the shelf's going to be quite big. It's going to have, you know, tons of different icons, and it's just going to take up too much space. And and some of those tools you don't you don't even use. You might even use just once every now and again. So it, it doesn't justify having its own little icon. Having said that, though, you can actually create or uh, your own shelves or add things to these shelves. So one way to do that is, for instance, um, if I go to Edit Mesh, and I'm just checking if there's no... So on here there's no bevel tool, and it's okay if you don't understand what a bevel tool is. It's just, it's just a tool that's not currently on this shelf at the moment. And for example, if I wanted to... If I was doing a lot of beveling to an object in Maya, and I wanted the button on this shelf so I could keep clicking it, we can go to Edit Mesh, and I can scroll down here to see Bevel. I'm just going to hit Control, Shift, and click. And you can see when I hit Control, Shift, and click, it adds a new icon. And if we hover over this, this is the Bevel tool. So we can add things to these shelves if we, you know, want to. If there's certain tools that we're going to be using quite a lot. And again, another thing we can do over to the right, we can see this small little bin icon. What I can actually do is middle mouse click and drag these options over to the bin to remove them from the shelf. Um, what you'll see towards the end as well is there's one called custom and in here you can add your own custom tools so if for example you were working on a job that had a lot of modeling tools but it didn't have all the polygon tools you were working with a few curves you might be working with a few animation things very specific tools that are quite hard to access you could go to wherever the tool is, so select like merge, control shift, click to add it to the shelf and then click and keep adding tools that you want to use so here you can see I've got a specific amount of tools that I'm going to be using and again if we don't you want to use these you can middle mouse click drag to the crash, trash can so it's just a way of customizing Maya even more to make it even quicker to access those tools so I'm just going to middle mouse click and drag all those and you'll see towards even more towards the right on my video but not on your Maya at home is there's all these tabs like J Tool, J Mod and like I said I'm called James so these are my custom shelves so I've got J Tool for different tools I use J Mod which are all the most common tools that I'm going to be using so this is just to speed it up for me uh, so these are the tools that I personally use uh, another modeler or another animator will use different tools so they'll have different shelves and the way that I've created these shelves is if we go to the far left and we can click on this little arrow so and we're going to get shelf tabs so we can hide it if you want to hide it I'm going to right click on this and go to shelf editor and this is going to bring up the menu it's going to look quite confusing but this is where you can start to sort of going to advanced edits of these tools so we'll leave this for the moment but this is where we can start to get a bit more advanced but we'll go into a bit more detail later on the next one down is new shelf so I'll just hit new shelf it'll pop up with a, a little window saying what what's the name you want so I'll just put I'll put test hit OK and now you can see there's a new shelf called test you can right click uh, left click down here again if you want to delete shelf and it's going to ask me do I want to delete test yes I'll delete that so it's got rid of that shelf so that's where you can add new shelves 
I'll delete them or if you wanted you could load shelf and that's going to go to a certain file so if you've exported shelves uh, earlier on and then right at the bottom save all shelves so if you've created a new custom shelf when you close Maya by default it's going to save all these shelves anyway but if you're worried that you know Maya's going to crash or you've got to shut down unexpectedly you could just click here and save all shelves to save all the custom tools that you've put up there okay so to the right further over here you will see that we have something called the attribute editor and the channel box slash layer editor and these are going to be quite, uh, used quite a lot so the attribute editor you can either s click the top right icon up here so there's, as you can see in the top right there's these three icons the first one if we hover over it it says show hide the attribute, attribute editor the next one is the tool settings and the next one is the channel box so we can click these to hide or show these so the first one we're going to go through the attribute editor and another shortcut is control A or you can press control A twice so control A A or just hit control A and keep tapping A to switch between the attribute editor and the channel box so it's just another um, shortcut to get those up so you can see if we've got them both open as well it adds them on the same sort of tab down here so there's two tabs we can switch between so to start off with the attribute editor if we select this sphere so you can see it says make a selection to view attributes so here if I select the sphere you can start to see all these different tabs in here now and don't worry too much if you're quite new to Maya these, these will start to make more sense later on but the attribute editor has all the attributes of the object you've got selected 